only you satisfy only you satisfy only you satisfy my soul Good afternoon everybody. Here we are again, still struggling to get a COVID free a meeting together. We're getting closer though, we're getting closer. I know I say that every week, but man of faith, see? I just know it's going to happen for us soon. And um, while, while we're, uh, we're working this way, it gives Lisa a chance to build up her stocks of uh, of junk food and, and bits and pieces like that. Ray and Julie are back from hospital, except that Julie fell over again. But um, apart from that, everybody seems to be okay. Never mind, Jules, you, you'll come together, you'll be okay. All right, I chose for today John 14, 21, which says, the person who has my commandments and obeys them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Now, there is a word in this verse that deserves a little more attention. The Net Bible translates it as reveal. The King James Version translates it well from the Greek. The word used is manifest and it means to shine inside. This tells us that the revelation would be an inward light of the presence of the Lord Himself. Imagine that, hey, isn't that great? Colossians 1.27 Actually, you don't have to imagine that, do you? You've got it. Colossians 1.27 God wanted to make known to them the glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. There it is, Christ in you. As we receive God's love, as we embrace it as our, as our own, the love of Messiah will become more and more visible to us. This comes from a place of inward surrender. So we're not talking about salvation here, we're talking about Lordship, which is a very different matter. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the divine presence is what we're talking about. God told Moses that his name means that he is present. That is, in every moment, that is, past, present, and future, the unpronounceable name, that's yod Hey vav Hey, and it's shorthand for I with you am. Notice that he squeezes you inside his name, I with you am. Was there ever a safer place in the entire universe? There is no moment in time, just as there is no place where God is not, and God is not there for us. Isn't that great that there is nowhere that we can lose God? There is nowhere that we're out of His presence. Now this includes times of testing too, times of darkness and even the threat of death itself. Psalm 23 and verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we've got to remember that that psalm is a psalm to live by, not to die by, because if we, when we start that psalm, it's the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's a promise that he's going to look after us even there. The Lord, our God, 
does not abandon us even when he seems hidden, powerless or willing, unwilling to intervene. Faith trusts that he is present there in moments when we are vulnerable and weak and afraid. God is there for us and seemingly all alone Sometimes we feel loneliness uh, and we feel like God has left the building, but he never does. This is where we must believe that all things are bound up in his love and goodwill towards us. Faith receives God as always present, the substance of our hope and dream of eternal healing and eternal life. The function of of a name is to point to or signify reality. When we are in the hardest of moments, we need not worry about the morphology or the phonetics or the linguistics of God's name. That doesn't matter at all. We are busy calling out in desperation. We don't have time for that stuff. And we are hungering for his presence and his love and his life. And we are like little children crying out for father. It is pride that makes people hard-hearted regarding such matters. The Spirit of God speaks words of life to those who need to hear them. Sometimes we may experience painful loneliness, a desperate feeling that we are unlovable, unwanted, unseen. We struggle between the extremes, lamenting our very existence while demanding to be made safe. I want to die. No, no, I want the presence of God. I want to be healed. And there's this struggle going on in the life. But God knows what he's doing with you. We feel abandoned, hopeless, and shrouded in gloom. We then attempt to suppress or avoid the pain through obsessions of various kinds. But doing so will only temporarily hide the truth of our inner emptiness and sadness. It is in the seclusion of the desert that we can discover there is a beloved one who sticks closer than a brother. That's from Proverbs 18.24. There is a beloved one who sticks closer than a brother. If you've got a brother and I don't, so I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> All I've ever seen of brothers is that you seem to get into fights with them. But I guess you know what you're doing. Anyway, you're stuck with them. So make the best of it. Because brothers are good in the, in the final um, analysis, aren't they? You can learn that you are never really alone. That you are not forgotten. That God sees you. That's what he wants you to know. Not only that. But he wants you to feel accepted. He wants you to feel chosen, esteemed, loved, and wanted. In the deserts, the one who loves you most speaks and says to you, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Song of Solomon 2, 5. The core of the struggle is here. Whether you will decide to trust in God's personal love for you or, or whether you will shrink back into the places of darkness, isolation and pain. That is the message of this amazing book that you have called a Bible from an amazing God. It's an amazing book from an amazing God. Jesus says, come to me, I love you, I accept you, 
I receive you. Be welcome with me. I will take your hand and I will be with you. We serve a mighty God, folks. Praise his name. Well, it's the run up to Christmas. We're going to try and open the church. And that's going to be fun, trying to fit everybody in. If we can possibly do it, we will have a meeting. If not, what we'll do is let just enough through and then we'll smash the door into your face as you try and get in, okay? So that's the best way we can handle that. I'm getting glared at by my wife at the moment who thinks that's not a good idea. Anyway, God bless you. Have a great week. Live it for Jesus. See you soon. Bye. Only you satisfy. Only you satisfy. Only you satisfy. My soul. Bye.